back, everyone. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have been seeing what's happening with GameStop in this stock now with different types of manipulation, whether it's hedge funds, whether it's investors, or whether it's apps restricting investment in it. Now, to talk to us about what actually happened and where it's going, we have Charles Mizrahi with us. He's with Alpha Investor and also the Charles Mizrahi Show. Charles, real great having you on. Same. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. So. Why don't we start from the beginning with what's happening with GameStop? How did this whole thing start? Now, there was this hedge fund, right? Uh, what, what were they actually doing? Right. So GameStop, as you know, is, a, is, is, is not a great business. It's bricks and mortar, retail, selling video games on disc. <laughs> so welcome to 1998. You know, so it, it really, it's a dying business. And uh, it's, it was priced like that. Like, I, figured, I think it was last year. So it was trading about $3 a share. Recently, what happened was the, uh, the founder of Chewy.com joined the board. Now, prior to that, several hedge funds took short positions, which they were selling the stock uh, in the anticipation of buying it back at a much cheaper price. In other words, they were thinking, or all well, the research showed them, that the stock is, or the company is not really valued as much. That's one side of the table. The other side of the table are, is a new crop of, of retail traders. And these are pretty smart people. Uh, sitting behind computers and on online forums like uh, Reddit, for example. And they basically said, you know what, we, we like this, and they started to buy it. Now, the thing about it is when you start buying shares of a stock that's shorted, eventually the people who shorted are going to have to cover or buy back at a higher price. So these retail traders started to drive up the price to biblical proportion levels. These things were moving 100%. You know, for example, yesterday, AMC, Another stock that was heavily shorted that the retail uh, traders started buying went up 300% in one day. 300%. AMC, movie theaters. I don't know if anyone's going to movie theaters anymore, but it went up 300%. So, so you have two sides here battling each other, the hedge funds and these retail traders. And what recently happened, I think just as of this morning, I think it was um, Robin Hood and a couple other brokerage firms stopped trading or stopped letting trades in, this, in, in, uh, in, these, in these names. I think it was GameStop and a couple others. So. Uh, what you're seeing here, and the stock I think was down 50, 60 percent today. Yeah, because of that, yeah. 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 So you're seeing a, a, a tug, a, a, a game of tug, a tug of war, because the hedge funds eventually have to cover, and the retail traders are ganging up on the long side, and that's why you're seeing this crazy, crazy volatility in the stock. Is the company, as of yesterday, GameStop worth $28 billion? Absolutely not. But this is what's hap this is what happens when you have uh, a animal spirits get into the game. And that's what we're seeing this moment. Now, one of the big narratives right now is people angry at the hedge funds. And then, of course, the government now, SEC, investigating these guys on Reddit and so on. And now people are angry as well at apps like Robinhood because it's restricting people from purchasing more of these, sh of these shares. And so you have three levels of manipulation, and you have three levels of, say, discontent with, e with each other. Um, now, let's start off with what actually happened with the hedge funds, because you said they were short selling the stock. And from what I understand, this is basically like where they intentionally lower the price of the stock and then get people to sell off because they cause panic a little bit and then buy back and make a profit. Well, that's what is, they hoped. Is, is this what was happening? Well, that's what they hoped to have happened. What short selling is basically, it's the inverse of a, of a buy and sell. Instead of buying when you get something and hope it goes up and sell it at a higher price, short selling is the exact opposite. You borrow shares, you sell them, you give them some, and you anticipate buying them back at a lower price. So if you, sh if you short something at $10 and it goes to $2, you make an $8 profit. Now, every dollar goes up, you're losing. It goes up to 11, 12, 13, 14, and you have to keep paying to support that position with your brokerage firm. So that's what was happening. So the hedge funds, you bring up a good point. The hedge funds, when they were short stocks, and not only hedge funds, it, it was it was it was well, basically hedge funds, which I should say. You're right. They would short a stock first, and then come out on CNBC or publish a report saying this thing is dog poop. It's terrible, and the price would drop. As it would drop, they would buy it back. We're almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, and that was considered okay. It wasn't market manipulation in any sorts. Now, we're seeing an interesting dynamic. I don't know how this will play out, and I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the government always comes too late to the, the game. Their concern here is these individual traders on Reddit and these uh, you know, 
those people buying on Robinhood, they're, they're concerned with collusion. They're all joining together, but this can be a hard case to prove. Either way, it seems, and this is just from a 10,000 foot view, because the game is changing and we'll find out something three months from now, and I'm just based on the facts that we have now, is that the, um, the hedge funds were uh, trying to push, not push down the stock, but they were trying to uh, make a profit as the stock goes down, and the retail traders are rising up and saying, we're coming after you by making the price rise, and it's, it's been working. That's what's scary. And so, and so now where we're at, there are the retail buyers, as you mentioned. These, these guys are saying, well, you know, we're putting this essentially company out of business, these uh, hedge fund managers who were, in their eyes, trying to short a stock and manipulate it. And now they've prevented that from happening by buying into it and driving up the price. So these hedge funds now are risking going out of business, filing for bankruptcy. Um, one of the big ideas is, is they're being charged or looked into, we can say, for, say, collusion or coordination with this. But wouldn't hedge funds also be under the same basic type of coordination? Yeah, well, they, they didn't. They, they, no one's claiming that, you know, 10 hedge funds got together and decided to short it. Uh, the thing which is really, you know, walking up, and it's, and it's legal, that's the issue, of taking a short position and then talking up your book as it's called. So you're talking, it's almost like, you know, you, you, it's not almost like it is. You take a short position, then talk down the stock or publish a report. And uh, Citron Research, I think, did that last week. They could have put out a report at, uh, saying, at, I think the stock was $40. They said it's going to 20 And that was just like throwing, uh, you know, gasoline on the fire. The retail trader just bid that thing up in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know, I think uh, it went as high as $360 yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know how it's going to play out, and it's a little too early to call. Uh, and maybe we find that it wasn't only the retail uh, traders that were driving up. Maybe it was other hedge funds who saw a great profit opportunity. I don't think they're so noble of trying to put the hedge funds out of business. I think at this point, people just want to make money. And when you see a stock go up 1,600% in 10 days, I want to jump in. And that's what seems to be happening. And now, looking forward a little bit, if we see these hedge funds you know, what they're t over $10 billion now they've essentially lost, we understand. They have to pay it off, they're filing for bankruptcy. Does that then go to the banks? And if it goes to the banks, does that mean the Fed might bail them out? How does yeah, this work? Yeah, but that's a long chain away. And, and, and none of them that I've known of uh, had to file. So there's only one, uh, Melvin Capital, which had to go and uh, ask their partners, uh, Citadel and, um, and Steve Cohen, who invested in, in that fund, run by a really smart guy, really, really good, excellent track record. They were short the stock, stock was running, they needed a $2.7 billion infusion to hold the position. From what I understand, they're totally out of the, they claim that they're totally out of the position now. But uh, th there's no systemic risk, there's nothing like that that we're hearing of. And no one's going to the Fed. The Fed is not going to bail out anybody who lost money shorting. So uh, you could wipe that, especially uh, uh, a Democratic, uh, um, uh, government is not going to go and 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 really uh, save anybody in that sense. So I, it's not there yet. It's not even there. Not even close. Hmm. Now another interesting point in this one that I've seen a lot of chats on people discussing online is it seems that this has become in the, some ways a type of almost like a protest against big business, and they're seeing now they have the power to do this against other stocks if they want to. Um, I, I understand it doesn't really hurt the business but it does hurt the hedge funds behind these things that prop them up. And as a type of activism now, it seems people realize they can do this. Now, when it comes to people's access to the markets, we saw Robinhood restrict this, we saw Discord ban the chats, we saw Reddit, looks like it's going to possibly ban this group that was kind of coordinating this whole thing on, through their own investment network. Mm -hmm. And people are concerned now that they're being denied access to the stock market, that they are being restricted from investing. And yes, and on some of these apps, they are being restricted. They can't purchase shares. And they feel now that the game is kind of rigged against them. What would you say to these people who have that concern? Uh, well, it's, it's a good case, you know. It's, uh, it, you know, if, it's, if, it's an op if there's nothing that, that was done that was illegal uh, to stop the, the uh, trading in the stock, I, I, d I don't know why. I, I don't see any justification for that. But then again, I'm only seeing one angle that maybe there's something's happening behind the scenes, but it doesn't make any sense that they should stop trading certain stocks because of crazy volatility. If there are margin calls or if there, if there is um, some type of huge imbalance, they could hold trading. But to stop trading because of the volatility, 
I don't know, it doesn't sound, it's like changing the rules in the middle of a game, you know, that, uh, that rubs me. In fact, um, I think it was 08, uh, sometime, before, beginning of 09, during the financial crisis, I do remember that the banks were getting whacked. They would go, I think it was 08. And for one period of time, they stopped uh, short selling. You couldn't sell. It's like you know, you're holding your hands against the dam. It's not going to work. It'll eventually, the market forces will overcome, uh, overcome that, which they did, and the bank started to plunge again until they found the bottom. I don't know what this is going to do here. Maybe just give everyone a breather by stopping it. But I, I agree. If, you, if you're going to change the rules in the middle of the game, uh, realize there's going to be some pushback. You just can't do that. Now, Charles, we just had some breaking news. A lawsuit has been filed against Robinhood, this investment app, for stopping the investments into GameStop. And let me read what it says. It says this is filed in the uh, filed in New York, Southern District, uh, Southern District of New York. It says here, uh, nature of the action, Robinhood is an online brokerage firm. Robinhood purposefully, willfully, and knowingly removed the stock GME from its trading platform in the midst of an unprecedented stock rise, thereby deprived retail investors of the ability to invest in the open market and manipulated the open market. Uh, what are your takes on this? Do they, have a, do they have a chance with this lawsuit? How do you see this going? Well, uh, first of all, I did not know this until you just read that, uh, but it was coming. If you're, if you're, you know, look, Robinhood got, they, they got the, the client that they wanted. They wanted uh, the young person. They wanted the people, the millennials. They wanted people who could, look how easy it is to trade. And they got it, right? They got those. Now you got them all in. You brought all these hundreds of thousands of millions of, of, of people getting zero, getting, paying zero commission. They were fined, I think, a little while later of really um, selling their order flow to Citadel, another hedge fund. So it really wasn't free. So that was one issue. But okay, put that all aside. Now you create a platform where anybody, 10-year-old kids, of course, they don't know the 10-year-old kids, but anyone can pick up, the, pick up the app, buy and sell as easy if you're playing as, I don't know how easy it is, but it's extremely easy. In the midst of a trading frenzy, in a stock, what do you do? You change the rules. You say, well, you can't trade um, this stock. Based on what? Based on what? Was there an economic collapse? Is there a shortage of shares? Is there any illegalities? Were there any regulations that were broken because of this? Was there a failure somewhere? If a company specializing in trading can stop activity in a certain stock, as a customer, why would I ever want to open an account with these people? Today, it's GameStop. Tomorrow, it could be the stock that I own. Do you ever want to be in a position where you cannot get out or into something you want? So I don't know if they're shooting themselves in the foot here, and we'll watch this play out. You just you know, brought it to my attention just a few minutes ago, and I can't even think what's their defense going to be. We have too many people wanting to buy or sell. You're a broker. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to be doing. Now, Charles, when a lot of people are looking at what's happening with the stock markets right now, it is making them concerned that there is what appears to be, say, allowed forms of what they see as foul play. We see, for example, hedge funds able to restrict markets and mislead people about the nature of a stock and then profit from misleading people about it. We see now people are pointing to the fact that uh, government officials, people in Congress can commit insider trading and this is allowed. They see that if they themselves invest to basically undercut people misleading people and trying to profit from misleading people, that they themselves can get investigated by the SEC. And they see now that the platforms they use to invest, if they do that, can even shut them down and shut down their ability to invest. I guess, how do you see this impacting the perceptions of the integrity of the markets themselves? Okay, you asked a lot of great questions in there, so let's go through them real quick. Uh, hedge funds, they're, they're playing within the rules. And there's no, that I've seen in this scenario with GameStop or anything, where anyone outside, where anybody went outside the rules. Uh, the rules are you, it's, I wouldn't say it's a manipulation to profit off of, they take a short position, they could talk their book. You don't have to listen to it, you know, it, it, who cares? Uh, that's number one. Number two, the government. There are regulations, there are security laws, and they spell out a lot of things. Now, if people are gonna play near the lines, uh, you're subject to regulations like everyone else. So it's not that uh, in, in, in the um, in Congress or Senate, I forgot who exactly was, that was not, a, uh, tr they were trying to, or maybe it looked like insider trading, 
there were there was there were specific rules on what insider trading is. I don't think he got a carve out because of what he did. He won because he had a better lawyer. And the case that's the, we live in a, a rule of law. So the thing which troubles me in this is how could Robinhood stop trading in a stock uh, during a frenzy when? <laughs> A majority of their of their of their clients about half actually yeah. are, are in there because of the ability to trade and make it easy. So are they shooting themselves in the foot? Uh, I never had a Robinhood account. I tried to dissuade anyone from having one because I thought the temptation was too great in order to make trades, and it should never be that way. So over the short term, over the short term, this is a lot of noise. Over the long term, it doesn't mean squat because our system works, and really what is a stock? A stock is a piece of a business. If you look at it as a piece of a business, and you try to buy the stock, which is a piece, at a cheaper price than the underlying worth of the business, and the business continues to do well, inevitably the stock will do well. The stock follows the underlying worth of the business over the long term, not the other way around. So if you owned a piece of Walmart, one share in 1970, or a piece of Amazon in 1996 or 98 when it went public, you're a pretty happy camper with millions of dollars under your belt. So the point is, is that if you play within the noise, be prepared for a lot of choppiness and be prepared for this stuff to happen. Uh, I don't own GameStop. I have a nice portfolio of well-run companies by sales. I don't care. This day-to-day -day thing is irrelevant because I own a piece of great businesses that over the long term should do well. This playing now of buying and selling based on nothing more than momentum, it never ends well. It never ends, ends well. That's really it. Great. Hey, thanks again for being on Crossroads. Appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.